All right, YouTube. Today we're gonna play a little bit of black, white, tokens and standard. Just wanna play something else better than red, black. There, give something else a try. Give something else a try other than red, black. This deck was, I think it should be okay against red, black. Like you kind of gum the ground up pretty well. You have some answers to Hazret, so I don't know. We're gonna give this a try. Just kind of play something new, play something different here. I don't play a lot of standards, so. Oh my gosh, Star City Games. We're gonna have to, when we get some people in here, we're gonna have to show, show this post about my puppy. Star City Games posted a picture. I put, I, I tweeted this out before regionals, like, Dad, don't forget your Liliana. And Star City Games just posted it, how many treats can I trade for this? Oh, that's great stuff. All right, we are on the play. I would like to lead off. And this hand's good. I need another land. Well, actually, this hand's not super great because it's Gideon's. Most of the time, like, part of me wants to play three Gideon's, but the problem with playing, like, three Gideon's that I've noticed is that, like, the first Gideon doesn't die. Ever. They just, like, end up ignoring it. Or, or it just, like, wins the game or they ignore it. Oh, there's the boat ad. At least the knight's gonna be a pretty good, uh, pretty good brick road. All right, so we are gonna be able to curve knight into uh, into Gideon, and Gideon's a pretty good stopper against these aggro decks. So I find myself very drawn to this deck because this deck seems very similar to like green white tokens, which is one of my favorite decks I've ever played in standard. Jesus. Uh, this is a start, and then they're gonna draw like a million. The, the problem is, like, the damage isn't that bad, but the cards are going to be that bad. And that is what is gonna be difficult here. We're gonna be able to get the Heart of Kieran down. Hopefully, we draw land, we can get Heart of Kieran and Scrap Heap Scrounger. Oh, there's the Crasher that just gets in and kills my. Yep. This is a super aggressive start from my opponent here. <clears throat> Yeah, we're just we're just super dead. We're gonna go to the next game here. That was an absolute beating. So against the mono red deck, I want my Ixalan binding. I like angular sanctions and fumigate. I think I want one more land in this deck. Cards I don't want. I don't want cards that don't can't block. I'll keep one Scrappy Scrounger in as a late game kind of threat. But I, I feel like 24 lands, I've played this deck a little bit today, I feel like 24 lands is like one less than, one less than you want. You just want to be able to board, like, because hitting land drops is really important with this deck, because like, you're mana hungry from your Karns and all that stuff, so like, you don't really have... There's not really a, a, like having more lands is better than not having enough. I would imagine, I would think that this matchup would be okay. I mean, obviously they can get under me like they just did, but I've got the necessary, I've got like some good, like History of Benalia is a really good roadblock. I've got good removal for, like I've got a, a lot of answers to Hazaret. I've got good early removal. So I think, I think I can hang with this deck. If they start going over the top with like haymakers, it's gonna get tough, but you know, as long as we hit our land drops, we should be, we should be okay. I would 
like to play first. And I got a mulligan in this hand. Can't keep this. I'm um, gonna keep this. If we go run and run and land, we're, we, we, we've got a chance. My opponent Logan too, isn't that nice? So he's gonna land. We're gonna scry anything that's not land to the bottom. Doesn't matter what it is, that is land. So it's nice we can go like first striker into, um, if one is to the black land, we can hit like a Bodad on turn one. My opponent leaves Bodads in, yeah. This card's insane. I get a chain whirlers in the format and it really like this really messes with chain whirler, but the card's just this card's just so good. When it, it just wins games when it's not messed with. Hopefully they don't have a removal spell for this and this brick wall a little bit. Nope. Alright, we get a land, we're in good shape. Alright, we hit the absolute opposite of the land. Um we're just gonna get this right now. My opponent's on three cards, so I'm gonna hope that they Kind of clunk out. All right, that's not clunking out. That card's actually very good against history of Yeah, I think we need. A I think this deck needs a twenty-fifth land. So that's what I'm gonna. That's what I'm gonna go with so far. After the few games I've played, I do think I want one more land. I'm just gonna take a shot. Now, if we draw a land, we can Gideon bubble this, which is nice. Since my opponent just plays a Hazret. Oh, gross. Ah, uh, we just missed land drops in both games, and it's—I think it's just going to cost us. Yeah, well, that was quick. Oh, that was just an ass kicking. I mean, if you play against mono red and you stumble, like they're going to kill you. It does kind of suck that on the on a mulligan they just went one two three, which you know is one two three four, which is kind of a a bit of a beating, but that's what mono red does. Go Cavs! All right, I am so excited for the Cavaliers. I'm probably gonna stream all the way up until the Cavaliers game tonight. When do they start? Cavs versus Warriors. I'll probably stop a little bit early just to make some food. They start 8 p.m. tonight, so get a, get a little four-hour stream in, then play some, watch the Cavaliers. I'm a huge LeBron fan. I love LeBron James. Like, so good. All right, I'm gonna keep this hand again. The the old two lander, powerful three drops. Oh, we were playing a mirror. Yeah, we are. I assume this mirror is all about board control. Like, it's not really about your life total as much. It's all about like picking your removal spells for when you need them, and then just like keeping a head on the board. Um, I think I'm just going to play this. I really don't want to push a Toolcraft Exemplar. I want to push like a Heart of Kieran. I'm going to be able to deal with this, I think. Like if we, if we can land this History of Vanalia, or we can just go like Gideon on this, bubble this, jeez. Bubble this thing, and attack. We need to land though. Come on. Come on. Untap land. They're, they're like representing a fatal push here, I think. Oh, jeez. So... We might get to the point where, like, do I have to just push this Scrap Heap Scrounger in order to not take a million damage? Because if I if I play my own Scrounger and they have Fatal Push, then, like, the game's just over. I think I've got to wait and push this Scrap Heap Scrounger before these things trigger. I think that's what we got to do. The very unfortunate thing we've been... This is the third... This is probably the third straight game that we've just had, like, stuck on two mana issues. If we scrub out here, we'll scrub out. We'll go back and we'll add another land to the deck. Which I think is important. 
And if my opponent has, only has three cards in hand, and like these are pretty low impact, the long, the scrap each crown is not, but these are pretty low impact the longer this game goes. If I can push this scrounger, and then like, so I have to stop them before they go to combat in their main phase, which kind of sucks. Okay, that's the card that's gonna like smack me around here. They just make a construct, okay. That's tough too. I guess now I'm just gonna push one of these. I guess I should have pushed the land. Okay, now we're now we're kind of in it. So let's probably play the Gideon. Bubble on the scrap heap scrounger. Yeah, I definitely should have pushed this because then this would be smaller. And then we're going to smoke this Karn. And now if we can untap, we're in actually pretty good shape. Unless my opponent's got a removal spell for this hard hearing. But that is the life we live. Cast out. Okay, that's going to target my hard hearing. This is going to pump. Yep. We just missed a little too a little too much in the early game that cost us. Okay, so everybody's gonna go big. So I wonder if I want I probably want this. And I probably want my angels and my Ixalon's bindings. I don't think that I want my toolcraft exemplars. My Night of Malices are good, not great. I could cut some Scrap Heap Scrounders. I wonder if I'm supposed to bring in Duress to like hit their answers. Like I could totally see a world where we're supposed to go something like, probably maybe even like cut two Fatal Pushes and then bring, but like all four Duresses seems kind of, kind of rough. Like I was supposed to like cut some Heart of I don't really know. Scrap each crown is pretty good if the game goes grindy, especially with Argo's Bloodfast. So maybe I can cut like a couple hearts, one of these, and one of these. I'm assuming my opponent's going to board out in such a way where Fredo Push is not as good. So let me try this. What does this look like? I want the Fragmatize. Well, if I want the Fragmatize to hit their creatures or their their like cast outs and such so let's get this in here I'm like I'm not in love with these two drops I kind of just want to go big and then like leverage a ballista I think yeah let's try this for the next league I'm definitely gonna get another land in this deck I've been a little frustrated with that Let's play first. Yeah, this hand's pretty good. Can't cast History Banalia, but such is life. I'll probably lead off on the Knight of Malice over the Heart of Karen unless I draw a way to make. Well, I'm even gonna. If I if I draw like. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna do lead off on the Knight of Malice. Yeah, so I, took, I took this from an 8 and 2 list at the Pro Tour. Someone that did very well with it. And so I've just tweaked one thing so far. I think I think I cut a Knight of Malice for another Fatal Push. Just be able to remove some creatures. Alright. I'm just gonna play this because you know, like this is no guaranteed attacker next turn. Okay, it probably gets a heart in play. So then we're going to play our own heart. I wonder how many hearts my opponent left in play. Left in their deck, I mean. Okay, no place for my opponent's nice. So this is just like screams or removal spell. So I think I'm just going to attack with my Knight of Malice. 
I don't want to expose my heart. I want my heart to be able to block my opponent's heart and have them use mana on their own turn. I just don't want it to be, I don't want it to make it convenient for my opponent to kill heart. This is such an annoying way to have like Karn show up in all of these games here, like how you've got to just open everything up. So now I'm just going to O-Ring Angel this Heart of Kieran. Oh, they're going to make a, they're making a 2-2. Two -two. Hmm. Seems kind of loose. So they're going to ship into my Karn. I could just snap the block off and then O-Ring the Construct. I could snap the block off, O-Ring Angel the Construct. I think I'm going to do that. Block here, O-Ring Angel this, attack this, and then have Karn and 3-4. And then like even if they kill this Angel, nothing comes back. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Just do this trade here. And then I'm up, I'm up a planeswalker on them, and I'm up, I'm ahead on board and up and in the planeswalker count. <clears throat> Wonder if I'm just gonna draw a land. All right, Bloodfast is really good, but for now we're just gonna get this in our hand. Eat this and attack Karn. Now we're in a good spot. And next turn I can go History and Bloodfast. I think that's a really good turn of events for me. Okay, I can have my own Lyra, which I kind of want to do. So let's plus this. I just want to make it so it's going to take two removal spells to kill my, uh, my Karn. Alternatively, I can just not care because I have a second Karn. I can just get Bloodfast and History Vanilla going down, block this, reanimate it, but then I don't have a second land. But, I mean, I don't have a, another land to bring this back. And if this gets goes un, unopposed, it's going to be pretty, pretty solid. Or I could Deadlands it. Deadlands it and, block, and then I can block it. I don't really want to waste my mana. My gut tells me that I should just play my own Lyra. Or I can just start working the blood fast and chump it. And if they kill the Karn, they kill the Karn. I have another Karn. And if I hit a land, I can just reanimate it. It's a tough decision. I think because my hand, my man, like everything is so clogged up, I want to keep my Karn in order to continue hitting land drops. I don't want to have to recast my Karn. If they kill this, I can just go Ixal and Ixalan's binding this. I just want to lean on my opponent. All I want to do, just create a battle presence and just start to like, start to just put them sort of like, not in the abyss, because that's the wrong way to, do, to say it, but just make it so they have no good plays. Like, control the game through board control, I guess, if that makes sense. And I'm just going to trade Liras. I don't want 
allowed to have them scavenge around my... This is fine. I just want to trade on my... On my level. Okay. We would have hit the land. So now I think I'm just going to minus... Get this Ixalan's Binding back. Ixalan's Binding this Lyra. Attack my opponent and then play Bloodfast. I don't want to commit too heavily to the board with like another creature. I think I would rather just continue to just slowly cement my, my board presence. The rest. Yeah, they just scooped it up there. I think that's all because we just traded properly. So on the draw, I think I want another removal spell. Board something like a Scrap Heap Scrounger out. Maybe just board all my Scrap Heap Scroungers out on the draw. And then just be a little more reactive. Maybe I don't want any two drops on the draw. Bring in like a Settle the Wreckage maybe. Just settle my opponent, especially if they're playing O Ring Angel. Yeah, let's try this. I think the Knight of Malice is okay. The Knight of Malice kind of holds down the fort. Yeah, let's try this. Hope everyone's having a good day there. It's my second stream of the day, it's been pretty awesome. I shit this. Need lands. My opponent will too, which is nice. Okay, this is good. We can kill one of their blood fast. We're going to scry anything that's not a land to the bottom. We can also kill a hard of Kieran. I'm going to put this on the bottom because it's not a land. It sucks that our Ixalan's binding is on the bottom of our deck. It's good to know about. Ooh, Toolcraft. Okay. Opponent's, opponent's getting aggressive. They're going to run into my history, though, if this is their plan. I feel like pounding through the ground in this matchup just is not the way to do this. I think I'm just going to snap this off on two. Oh, well now... So I could just smoke this Scrap Heap Scrounger. I'm just wondering if there's better things to hit with this. And I feel like there is. I feel like my Fragmatize can be better suited somewhere else. So let's just get this down here. This is kind of like Fatal Push or, or Bust. Like, we're really on the battlefield with this card. Looks like they got it. No, they have a Duress. Okay. So they probably take my History of Vanalia. At least I would. With the way that, it looks like the way that they've sideboarded, the History of Vanalia is really going to mess them up. Okay. The, the, the card advantage engine. I think overall it's kind of a poor take though. Just block with the Vanalia. Yeah, I think I'm just going to get in here with this. And then I'll just eat one of their creatures with my history. They missed their land drop, which is worth knowing. Let's trade with the Toolcraft Exemplar. Okay, so now they have a knight of their own. I'm actually going to trade with this. Well. Yeah. Get the artifact off. Turns this new and not relevant. Attacker or blocker. So let's cycle this. It's just going to be it's going to be super important to hit lands for for a reason like that. Now we're just going to play defense. I'll take this Knight of Malice trade here. If my opponent gives me the option to. Okay. 
Now I actually can go trade, push. I really want to get my board to a spot where I can, is that I can't really confidently play Karn next turn if I draw a land. Cause like if they have a removal spell into crew, I like playing standard from time to time the radio. How have you been? I haven't seen you in a hot minute. I kind of just want to push this. Or push this thing here. Then no, that comes back. Um, how do I play how do I play Karn next turn in a position for it to do well? So push this, they bring this back, crew here. I trade here, my Karn takes my Karn takes four, then I fragmentize this. Alright, we'll do that. I had a good uh, good Death Shadow stream this morning. Played some Faithless Looting Shadow. Yeah. Temple of Tilt. So let's just fragmentize this, and then we're gonna crack our opponent for 42 points of damage. And now we start, I guess now we turn the corner. I've been good. I've been good. I played uh played some Delver recently. You're a lands player, aren't you? Great elf. I did streamed a couple, a little bit of Legacy Delver for a couple weeks. A couple, probably like a week. That was fun. Scrap Dog comes back. Just gonna trade. Forsaken Sanctuary, so tilt. Oh, that means we don't have a white permanent. Hmm. Now all we want to do is hit land drops. I play eight rack and living as foretold. Is that the blue, the mono blue as foretold deck? I don't really don't like the way that my opponent's using their Karn. Oh, so I can actually just hit this construct get the construct out, get a white permanent, and smoke your Karn. Yeah, that one I play, that in paper too. Nice, 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 nice. Playing some standard. We're playing some non-red-black standard. I almost loaded up that blue-white control deck, but I decided I didn't have enough alcohol here to make it through a league with that deck there, Archmage. Who saw that $50,000 glory bringer? That was gas. All right, they have another Karn. And again, if we hit a land, we're just gonna play O-Ring Angel, O-Ring this, and then kill the Karn again. Yep. I would have killed my opponent had I gone to them, but I just don't think this is how this matchup is supposed to play. I think you're just, I think it's a resource based matchup. <coughs> also, y'all should check this out. This is the cutest picture on Star City Games right now. It was a great final, yeah. Yeah, I was like, come on, dude. Like, the Ragavan's there, you know? Okay, there's a Ballista. Hit that. All right, I guess we're just gonna O-Ring Angel this, and then, so we're gonna start by attacking my opponent, see what they do. We're just gonna start O-Ring Angel and resources. They asked me, and I said, sure. It's not like they just took it. No, we're not gonna play that. We're just gonna take their Gideon. 
And then we have three. I don't think there's a draw for them. And the way that they sideboard would suggest they don't have Fumigate in their deck. I guess Lyra. Lyra's good. They top deck Lyra. They're in business. Yeah, they asked me. They were like, do you mind? And I said, yeah, sure. I was going to ask, like, hey, you know, maybe I should have said, like, hey, give them a follow on Twitter or something like that. But there he is. God, he's so cute. He's taking a nap right now. It's tough to be Phil. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. All right, this is a pretty aggressive hand. I think we're gonna go Concealed Courtyard on one, Heart, then Scrappy. Hopefully we get to use this, use our mana on turn one. They mulligan six. It's very cute, yeah. I almost got 100 likes on Twitter on that picture. That's like the most likes I've ever gotten on a, on a Twitter post. My dog is a superstar. All right, Hinterland Harbor. So I just played against like a blue-green God Pharaoh's gift deck. <clears throat> so maybe that's what this guy's doing here? No, this looks like a Salt Eye Constrictor deck maybe? I have to figure out what standard deck I want to play for the Mox. Oh, Jesus. Because I am finally I finally have time to play in a Mox. I've got like 120 Mox points. I have to figure out what I want to play. I really like this deck. I don't know if it's very good, but I like how it, uh, I like, I like a lot how it, uh, gosh, what was I going to, how was, what was I going to say this? I, I like how it feels like green white tokens, which was my favorite standard deck I ever played. It's like, it's got some similarities to it. Like you don't have a lot of removal, but you play board control really well. Uh, this weekend's a standard mox, I thought. Steal these champion, okay. Yeah, that's that's probably the big game, right? So if I just kill this, I kind of want to do it next turn. My opponent can't gall to me next turn, right? If they, if they go hard to carry, this costs nine. If they draw a land, this costs twelve. I kind of just want to play a scrap heap scrounder. <clears throat> Well, no, they're not even attacking at anything. Yeah, I think we're just going to, like, try to step on their throats. Yeah, this, ra this guy's not Chain World approved, so I don't know if I'm supposed to play this guy or not. Like, maybe I'm supposed to play, like, more removal or something like that. Right, no plays from our opponent. So they're just dead if they don't have anything. New perspective. <laughs> if we could donate Mox points, I would donate to see you stream that. I'll just I would pay for your Mox with my Mox with my QPs. What do we got? We got a you got a dis you got a disenchant. He's got a disenchant. Ooh. Uh, that's okay, because this gives me revolt. We just get him. Get him out of here. Get out of my face. Okay. So against these decks, we gotta cut the tools. <laughs> Cut the scrap heap scroungers. Probably. I want O Ring Angel. Fumigate. I want another freaking land. That's what we're going to do here before the next one. I want Ixalan's Binding. Knight of Malice is like decent. I probably can cut some of my Heart of Kirins. And I kind of just want to bring in like, I want to just be a deck full of removal and card draw. Try something like this. Walking Blister doesn't really do a lot. So maybe I'm supposed to cut a couple of these. I would no doubt get frustrated. 
Oh yeah. The the just the terribleness of Modo. I kinda wanna cut these and bring in like some duresses. I'm assuming if they're blue, they've got cards like Commit Memory and they might have like they might have three drop Nissa, they might have five drop Nissa, and they might have like Hadana's Climb. And I just don't think these are gonna do anything. They might they might be okay on the play. Yeah, let's try this. Magic the Standarding, where you completely change your entire deck after every after every uh after every game. Alright, I will keep. Hand's not great, but if we can like we can kind of control the board a little bit. I probably maybe I should have mulligan this hand. I can go two, three, four, providing I draw a land. I guess I'm pretty fortunate they didn't play a land or elf there. I didn't think about that. All right, Wizzling camera, sure. I can block that. The brick wall, the Knight of Malice brick wall, baby. All right, that's a good draw too. I gotta figure out when I'm gonna cast it though, because I would like to just play on curve. I already had a taste of it. How'd you do in the modern challenge? All right, so now we're just gonna bubble this. I will trade with your blossoming defense. Okay. On oh, ascendancy, back. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Ascendancy. I think you're talking about the new Jess guy. Or not, I guess it's not really new, but. Okay, so bubble on this, go up to five, play Karn, tick up. And then hope my opponent. My opponent can. My opponent uses their entire turn. One, two, three, pump, they can kill a planeswalker, but it puts them down land. Is that worth it? I really don't want to just like not do anything with my turn. I could go Karn tick down, make a one one. I could do that. The, sh the sad part is just if I if I just play Karn and tick up, they get to kill one of my planeswalkers on the board. It sets them back a land, which isn't, which isn't anything really that big, and then I can like push, <clears throat> push the servant. But the Gideon's really holding this down. So my other line is play Karn to be mana efficient and tick down because this has to be a sorcery. Then I lose my Karn to like another blossoming defense. I guess it's kind of a tough. This is kind of like a tough decision here. Or I can just go Karn tick up, and then they. If they attack them both, they can kill one of my Planeswalkers. So I think what I'm going to do, I think we're going to go Karn and we're going to make a Construct. This is going to be mana efficient. And this opens up a lot of draws off the top of my deck that can potentially be pretty efficient. Like we draw a History Banalia, we go like History into Push. We draw another Karn, Karn into Push. Okay, so there's that Kenra. Okay, so we're still going to block here. Okay, so they're gonna kill one. This means they're gonna kill one of my planeswalkers again. Both in rolling get in. Okay, so now we just block this. <clears throat> then bubble this. Okay, see so now we have now we have a really good turn. So we bubble here. Tick up. I could play the Lyra also. Lyra seems pretty good also, but let's take up here. Ixalan's Binding in History. 
Okay, so next time we're going to go history into history, which is pretty good. This is what I'm talking about. This is why it's like such like green white tokens, because I should have played my land and left out double black, where you can just like snowball advantage. Like, I'm going to trade with one of these. Push before combat to gain a little bit. Where, where are these going? They're going at Karn. All right, let's push before combat, before damage, to figure, to see. Because if my opponent has, I should have pushed a different creature. Okay, so they have lost me defense there. So there's no sense in blocking that. So now I'll just trade with this thing. I'm gonna get my Karn. Which is sad. I don't get another history of Benalia. But what are you going to do? <clears throat> and now I'll just slam the Lyra. I think. Bubble this. Play the Lyra. Like they're, they're kind of out of resources. They can't. They need a land in order to... Another Steely Champion. Okay. Plus on this. Well, I could just Ixalan's binding this thing. And then they need one more mana and I just chump here. Alternatively, just block, block. Yeah, I'd like to hit one more. If I hit one more land, I can go binding into history next turn. Which is just a really good, a really productive turn. So I think I think that's what I want to want to do. We're gonna to try to block here, block this more than likely. If my opponent brings back the, on the Steel Leaf Champion on the or brings back onto the the Kenra onto the Steel Leaf Champion, like that's just life. We'll probably just let that happen and we'll just like outrace them in the air. Oh, that left me on the board losing my Gideon. That was stupid. I just didn't even think about that. All right, so you get my Gideon. And then we'll probably Ixalan's Binding plus History. Yeah, that was just stupid. That was bad on my, that was just a bad play on my part. So I could just Fumigate. But like, if I had Gideon in play, this game would be so good. I think we're just gonna attack in. And then I think I'm just gonna play another history. Like if my opponent wants to race me, I'm gonna win the race because of Lyra. <clears throat> and save this Ixlon's Binding for like a big dumb dinosaur. Yeah, that was a bad play on my part. What are you going to do? <clears throat> I'm not happy how I played the second game. We're going to be completely above the rim here. I will take 10. And then I'm just going to swing with both all of my creatures. They have Galta plus another Steely Champion. I guess I should have snapped that thing off. So now I have to do some math and determine what I have to do to like be okay here. So if I attack with this, I'm gonna go to 15, then this is five, 10, 15 that I can't block. I'm just assuming that my line more than likely is Lyra, Ixalan's binding one of these.
And then next turn, if there is a next turn, then I've got um, I've got history plus dunes. Oh, this is so stupid. I'm just playing so poorly. I should have done this before combat and swung with these. This is so bad. Uh, I'm playing this so poorly. I'm just not focusing. Looking over here, my social media is going nuts because of old Philly boy. People are saying such mean things about Philly. Like Alexander Peterson. That's a dead dog right there. That's so mean. Philly's not going to die. He was helping me. Yeah, I definitely should have attacked him and he would be at, he'd have two less creatures in play and be at two lower life. Which I'll figure out. I'll figure out before we have to get going here. There's a boat. All right, so he boats this thing, okay. Takes three to, takes three to crew. So he has to block all of my creatures. So if he blocks, it goes like crew, crew, attack, crew, block, block. Like he doesn't really do anything. Like no matter how this works, we're just gonna trade off the board. Then I'm like, it's gonna be this crew's here. Then maybe they go chump, chump. Yeah, that's probably how it goes. Like this crew's here. This eats this, this chumps. This eats this, I gain five more life, and then I just play a Bloodfast. Or I could just play a Bloodfast and look for a way to kill this. Which, let me see if I side, what I sideboard it in. My Fragmentizers are in my sideboard. If I play to it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't have anything that can kill this besides my one Thopter Rest. So let's just play to the Thopter Rest. I guess that like kind of does something, right? That just wins me the game, right? Because it makes so they have to chump block with both fairs. Because I push this now. Push this. If they go, if they crew right now, then this blocks this, this blocks this, this blocks this. Yeah, they just chump their whole board away. So I'm down with this. That was actually a pretty good draw there. I didn't even think about that one. That was actually a really good draw. Because now they just lose all three of their creatures and it's Lyra versus Land of War Elves Resilient, Resilient Kenra. Yeah, that was actually a really good draw. Didn't even think about that coming there. Oh, we're stalling out. Oh, league's over. Okay. So let's get back into the, in here. Let's add another land. I'm going to add probably a I'm going to figure out what to cut to just put another land in here. Moto's tweaking out, so we'll wait a second. Okay. Um, let's get here into the standard deck. White black banalia. I think I'm gonna add just the planes and I gotta figure out what to cut. I think I could cut this toolcraft exemplar. I don't think we're in the market for a lot of those after this weekend. So let's try this. <clears throat> let's just return back to this. Let's jump into another league. Went three two. I'm always happy in standard going three two while I'm learning decks. Sometimes I think of even, sometimes when I play standard, I should just play in the friendly leagues. Because, like, <clears throat> I'll burn, like, three leagues learning a deck. I've got, like, I've got, like, 55 treasure chests all ready to go. As soon as the price rebounds. What do we got here? Add a 
Fall of Mirror. Heater. Heater. All right. I'm gonna put that on the bottom. Uh oh. Moto's tweaking out a little bit. What's up, buddy? How you feel, boy? Ooh, you all right, buddy? You okay, bud? Feel like you're a superstar. This is uh, live looking at Philly. He's a little wet. For the famous puppy. Thank you, Farvey. We'll open up a treasure chest for you. Here while we're hanging out. Yeah, I got like a hundred likes on my tweet of Philly. It was unreal. What I get? I got a show and tell. Holy shit. Nice. This one, this is the promo one, right? Yeah, this is the promo one. What a what a treasure chest. You should sub more. Moral of the story, everyone should sub more. You know what I'm saying? Alright, let me get back to my game here. Alright, so we're playing against Blue White. So at least we're playing a good matchup. Though we did just draw a super dead card. <clears throat> We shall fight on, though. How's your day been, Farby? If you're testing for the mocks. Yeah, I should. I should for sure. The problem is, is like, my big issue there, um, uh, Arc Mage, is that oftentimes, like, I... It takes me a while to learn a deck, so I kind of just want to pick this deck and then tweak it, because I'm going to learn the ins and outs of it with just enough time. If they feel to ruin me, I'm just going to read the planes. I'm going to learn the ins and outs of it with just enough time to be able to like adequately play it. So I think we're just going to give this a try, and then, because like the mox is kind of a free roll, like. It's it's the it's free, so I heard it looked sound like your rugby thing ended up decent there, Farby. Nothing too bad, nothing you know. Like you guys did okay. It seems like sad you guys didn't win it. I was rooting for you. But I'm gonna jam this Lyra right into six open mana from my control opponent. And just tell him where the wild goose goes. Yeah, you're right, you're gonna counter that. Seventh in the country is still like, you know, it's pretty decent. As soon as my opponent shows me I get to fairy, I'll scoop. But I guess now we're gonna get on some of that double spell action. Negate, alright. Alright, it's your time to shine there, Night of Malice. Our beer squad is <laughs> nice. I can respect the beer squad. That was my favorite part of rugby, being the beer squad. All right, show me to fairy, buddy. Approach is also fine. Approach is good. 
This matchup's going to get significantly harder because they have approach. <coughs> okay, so against this deck, I want... I think I want Fragmatize. I probably want like a card like Ixalan's Binding. Um, and I want my Duresses and my Bloodfasts. I don't want my Fatal Pushes. Um, Lyra's, Lyra's probably not very good. Heart of Kieran. And then I have to just cut seven, th I need to cut three more cards. I probably want my cast out. I don't think I need Thought to rest. I kind of want all my threats. Maybe Walking Ballista is the worst one of my threats. I kind of want to keep in my Black Knights to trade with their White Knights. Fragmentize hits like Cast Out, Search for Iscantas, those kind of things. Maybe it's kind of narrow. I guess I could cut one of them. I have Duress anyways. I don't know if I really want O-Ring Angel. O-Ring Angel, this doesn't really seem like an O-Ring Angel matchup. We're gonna go like this. We're gonna give this a try here. It doesn't seal away. I forgot about that. My whole deck's pretty seal away proof. He's getting the trials might not be very good. Maybe I should have sided them out. Ugh. I think I'm gonna keep this. I've got a heart and a scrappy scrounger, and then I've got my mana set up. I really don't want a mulligan. Like my deck's so expensive and mana hungry that if like I can just live off the top pretty well. I keep in Lyra. Okay. Okay. I hate mulliganing hands. I hate mulligan hands of this deck. There's a couple games I've played where my mana is set up. It's like not very good. Like I got a heart and a scrappy scrounger. Like I probably should just be an adult. Like if they seal away my scrappy scrounger, then I'm just like up shit creek. Peter, let's get a black source or Karn. Yeah, I think Karn's Karn's worth it. And I've got like I would like to draw. <coughs> and like it's not like um, duress is isn't good later in the game. So like they're gonna incidentally draw a few cards, and Karn's kind of like my big my big haymaker. How are you, Drago? I heard Levi did really well at regionals. He top aided. That is pretty awesome. And I'm just gonna jam this Gideon. Like, if it gets duress, it gets. If it gets countered, it gets countered. Like, I, if they counter this, maybe they don't have an answer to this one. We're gonna cycle this. All right. I'm gonna make the emblem because I can. Jeez. Alright. I think I'm just gonna plus this. I don't know. I think I'm just gonna send this in. Because if they seal away it, then I know I've got a, I've got a free road for my Karn. I think we're just gonna get in here. Because if I can just get my Karn in play and they they find a way to answer it, then I can, like, Ixalan's binding it back. Alright, that's sad. I was really hoping they were going to get that. But, we're just going to cast stuff. Whoa! Oh my god, I F6 because I, I thought there was no way that was going to resolve. I was like, there's no way this thing's gonna go get in here. They didn't kill this, and then they didn't have an answer to this. That's that's great. That's great. Right? There's like no way that was gonna resolve, right? Like, I was like, there's no way that thing's gonna resolve. I can just F6 through my turn. Whatever, I get it back, but I would be up another card. So this is just like, you know, great. God, we are just... What would I would do for a black source? All right, give me the black source. Jerk. Sure. 
play the land they know about. They're probably gonna like, even, I guess if they Teferi my Ixalan's Binding, then I just get to kill their Teferi with the Gideon, but they get the Karn off the battlefield. But I'm just gonna draw the Karn. They just revoke, okay. Sad. I don't even get my Black Source. There we go. We're in business. Can't lose. Oh, we can't win. All right, I'm just gonna take this to Fairy. Get in there. Yeah, I was just like, I don't know, I just thought to myself, oh man, there's no way this thing's resolving. I'm just gonna like, are they gonna field me? That's productive. Nice. I'm trying to think of my good draws here. Like, Ardle of Bloodfast is always my control draw, but, like, that doesn't do shit. Alright. Oh, I'll just attack, then duress them. Hopefully, they drew another Teferi. I guess I can save this. They drew a Seal Away. I guess I should, maybe I should save my duress for when I want to push something through. Yeah, I'm going to save my duress in case I draw another Karn or a, um, draw a Karn or draw, like, a Bloodfast. Not a Bloodfast, like, I something to deal with this cast out. Yeah, I mean... I don't think this is worth protecting here. Cause like this is, they have so many ways to kill this that I'm just gonna like, it'd, much, it'd be much better I think for me to be able to get, well, I, I wanna land like a card advantage thing cause they have so many answers to these creatures and these planeswalkers. That was probably dumb though. Cause like the longer this game goes, the worse it gets for me. And I'm not gonna win the game by doing this. Yeah. I just like thought to myself that it didn't really matter. I think they played this Glacial Fortress. Yeah. I thought to myself like it didn't really matter, but yeah, SCG Con is this weekend. Yep. They did not play a land. So they have three spells. One of them is an Essence Scatter. Because like, I just thought that they were going to. I do another dress. I thought that like, they have so many answers to this card that they're going to like through seal away or blink of an eye that like this card in the in the end of the game like doesn't really matter but like it's good chip shot damage but it's not worth fighting over with the only thing that i can fight with if i drew another one and i guess like it was my only way to win yeah I, I should, I, like, in the hindsight, like, it sucks because I'm not going to do anything with, like, this card's not going to win me the game more than likely. Like, a control opponent with, like, a hand that they're not playing spells. But I guess it was, like, my only option. What sucks here is that I just didn't, like, the, the one black source for so long was what really kind of stunk things up. All right, so we'll take this settle. I want. I wanted. I wanted to like. I. I. I get that it wasn't good. Like in hindsight, Drago. But like, I really wanted to. I got another black source, which is nice. I really wanted to fight over something that could draw me cards, and like help me fight back into the game that way. And like in hindsight, it was a mistake. That's why I wanted to do it. It's like I fucked up. I should have just duressed it and like. Because it's like, it's all I had going on. Like, as shitty as it is, it's, it's, it's the life that I'm living. So now we're at a point where if we can draw, like, an Arvel's Bloodfast, we're, we're in great shape. 
My opponent's gonna go to two next turn. And had they drawn their cards, like depending on the order that they drew their cards in, had I duressed and got this Gideon down and gotten one hit in, then they'd be dead here. This is a fumigate. It's a fairy. Okay. So what are you gonna do with your fairy, man? You got a minus on one of these, right? They're gonna draw a card. Okay. That's annoying because like I have to send both of these at Safari in order to get it off. So they have an essence, they have a double essence scatter and then one unknown card. Ignore the Teferi. Now that I drew the. They're just going to counter the Scrapping Scrounger, so that's kind of a blank. I could cast the Scrapping Scrounger before combat, and if they let it resolve, it lets me know they have Settle. I really just want to ignore this, but I don't think I can get away with that. The known is definitely a second to fairy to me. Yeah, that would suck. I should, if they go to counter this, I'm going to respond probably by, by, uh, by scavenger grounding this. Okay. So now it appears that I'm going to be able to get rid of this. Um, but I'm gonna be able to get rid of this Teferi. Unless they have a blink of an eye. I just did that in case they sided in like Torrential Gear Hulk. Okay, that's what I was just worried about with that. I don't really know the standard format too well. I didn't I didn't actually need to watch too much of the Pro Tour. They just have another Teferi I'm just gonna throw up. I lost game one too, right? Just mulligan to five in that one. Six mana, so this is an approach, okay. All right, so don't have that many draw steps. Not to mention they just had one lined up. So I'm just gonna hope they have nothing. They have one essence scatter that I know about. So, I'm playing with the no win con. Yeah, that thing looks cool. That's not a bad draw, because if they counter it, we bring this back. We got, we got a chance. So even if they, like, we bring one back and we crew the heart, we crack them for eight, I mean, one turn clock. <clears throat> so they kind of need essence scatter plus something, unless they have a way to draw, because the, this is this is a, like a lot of cards down. And we're just gonna hope they don't have to settle the wreckage. I don't think we're beating. But we have to kill them before they get anything really important going on. Because the approach is six cards back. This represents two cards. <clears throat> if they have like a glimmer or a pull from here, then I'm just like super dead. I gotta make sure not to have six because if they blow the board up, then I'm gonna bring everything back. So now I gotta think about this attack of how to like. So there's no way that I can really attack and play around settle, right? Because I attack with this, I have to attack with. <clears throat> if I attack with just one, then I lose to like, but then I don't beat Blink of an Eye anyways, because it'll just blink my thing. So, okay, so I'm just going to attack with one knight. They have two cards, one's an Essence Scatter. I guess if they had Gear Hulk, this by attacking with both would play around Gear Hulk. Like, um, okay, that's that's good for the home team. 
Oh, it also plays around seal away because they'd have to seal away. No, they can't seal away anything because these have vigilance. Did you rip the settle? All right, go team. Go team. Okay, so. I think we're gonna keep it the way that it is. God, on that Star City Facebook post, there's just so much shit posting. There's so much, there's so much shit posting. Queer base. Yeah, so I don't know what to cut though. Like, I don't want to be too threat light. All right, we got a heater. Kind of a heater. Like, if this came into play untapped. If I draw a like, concealed courtyard, it's kind of a heater. Come on. White source. White source. I played 25 lands. All right, that's... I'm not going to draw a white source. That's the next best draw. Okay, so negate, approach, invoke the divine. <clears throat> if you were to do that. So I'm going to play Scrat Dog next turn. I feel like I can leave them this negate because this negate's just gonna trade with the heart of Kieran. This invoke the divine. Cause like these the like there's no sense in me taking this invoke or this negate, because they basically do the same thing. Like one trades with history, they both trade with history. I might as well just take this approach. I feel like that also feels like super mope because it's so late in the game. Like no matter what, each of these, I might as well just take the invoke because it gains them four life. That's what I'm gonna do. Then we're gonna play Scrap Dog next turn, or and then Scrap Dog is gonna take us to the Promised Land. Define shit posting. Just saying stupid stuff. Like you see the picture that I posted yesterday, Johnny, for regionals. Like, Star City Games asked me if they could reshare it, and I was like, sure. Um, Gideon. We get in here with the scrap, the scrap dog. And then I'm gonna play Heart and Toolcraft example. I'd like to get History down, but History runs right into the negate. There's people saying stupid stuff. Like, that's a dead dog. I'm like, no. Okay, so get this, get this. So they got If New Rivulet, Approach, and Two Unknowns. Okay. So I kind of want to play, well, actually, does this check? If you at the beginning if you control three or more artifacts, it all if at the beginning of combat your turn, if you control artifact. Like can they blow this up in response and then I don't get it anymore? God, you're on team Golden State Warriors, you're killing me, Lancey. You're killing me. Go Cavs. I kinda wanna play this hard of Kieran, because if they wrath the board next turn, I can go Gideon, tick up and attack. So I'm going to play this before combat so that, because I actually literally don't know how these rules work. If they blow this up, I want to make sure I have another artifact. And if my opponent settles me, then like they settle me. It's a little sad, but it is life here. I can very much see his, my opponent this, like setting up for a glimmer turn. The UG Karn deck is, is shit. At least that's what I thought it was shit. Like when I was looking at it, 
I was like, this doesn't do anything. <clears throat> it just plays like a bunch of really bad cards in order to make it so your Karn that goes down is good. And I was just like, I don't really think this is very good at all. Overtimes. I hope they go to 4-0. I think it's going to be a sweep, too. Like... I think I think the Cavs like the Cavs should have won game one. And I think the Cavs are probably just really deflated. Yeah, that's good. And I just don't I don't see them coming back from that. That was like one of the most heartbreaking moments in like sports history. There. Like the Cavaliers went into the other building, they played well, they got like like don't you like it I thought that there were some bad some bad breaks when it came to the officiating, but like that's basketball. Nobody's perfect. You know, like, people are, people are going to make mistakes. The Cavaliers have, like, the Cavaliers have benefited, as every team has, from good calls in the past. Like, that's just basketball. But the fact that they overcame, like, despite those bad calls, okay, right at the end, they overcame it, they had a chance to win the game, a game they shouldn't have won, and that happens, like, ugh. That's so bad. It was also, yeah. It was also pretty funny. I didn't even use the Gideon. I was just, I'm just so focused on talking. One, two, three, four, five, six. So what do we got here? We got... <clears throat> what do I beat? I didn't even, I didn't even plus on it. I was talking. No, I didn't even plus it. I was, I was talking with everybody. That's sometimes stream problems. So, we can play around a couple of different things here. We can play around Settle the Wreckage by just attacking with Toolcraft Exemplar and Heart of Kieran. We can play around Torrential Gear Hulk, which I don't think they play Gear Hulk anymore. If I play around Torrential Gear Hulk, then I attack with everything and I still get them. I can play around Invoke the Divine. Or is this four life? So I can't beat this. What I want to do is... Dude, I'm, I'm, a, Cav, I'm a Cavs fan. I, I love me a LeBron James there, Gary. My other line of play is I could just attack with this Heart of Kieran. And make it so that if my input <clears throat> enough power on the board, so that if my opponent settles me next turn, so four, seven, ten. Okay, so I'm just here's the play. We're just gonna attack with Hardy Kieran. And then if they tap out to go approach, then I'm gonna put enough power on the board to kill them next turn. I like the two most controversial players slash teams in sports. They shouldn't be controversial, though. Like, LeBron is a good person. And I don't understand why everybody picks on him. Why everybody's so mean to him. So we get Settle the Wreckage. It's either Settle the Wreckage or he dies. It could have Invoke. Okay. All right. Yeah, so the reason I just attacked with this is because I'm just assuming this dies here. And then next, I go history into Scrap Dog. And then I attack them for 3, 7, 10, 12 next turn. That's just the most ridiculous and egregious statement of all time, Gary. He averages a triple double. Like, he obviously makes his teammates better. If that's your opinion, then you can't be of the opinion that Russell Wilson makes his teammates better. You can't be of the opinion that Chris Paul makes his teammates better. Like,. Like, he makes his teammates better. <clears throat> God, Gary. I'm about to, I'm about to just, I'm about to lose my mind. Whoa, we won that game? What the fuck happened here? I, I got distracted and I wasn't even, what happened? We won 2-1? Oh, sick. Forced Kyrie out. They just butt heads. So then are you gonna say the same are you gonna say the same thing that Kobe 
He didn't break up Wade Bosch. Like, that that team was old. You can't win there. Like, if that's your opinion, Gary, then Kobe Bryant's the same thing because he pushed Shaq out of out of uh, L.A. I'm going to moan him. Here. Put on top. Like, Kyrie Irving wanted to be the man, and he's not... Oh, man, we're going to play against another control deck. And he, he just was not the man material on a team with LeBron. Russell Westbrook, excuse me. That's, I, I meant to say Russell Westbrook. I was just talking about basketball. Oh, Fernando Noguera. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Enjoy. Oh, he's on the... That's on YouTube. That's, that's fine, too. I appreciate Fernando for subscribing on YouTube. If you guys want to support me more, you should go over to my YouTube channel and check that out. That's that's how we do it there. And I would assume that Kobe, it's the same thing about that one. Wow, we're dead. I think we're just going to push a token. So that I can play this Gideon with under no pressure. Alright, so now we're just going to go play the Planeswalker game. Hopefully they don't play like a Wrath. I'm just gonna plus on this, get this token loyalty up so we can take some damage. We got Kobe in comparison to James that Kobe knows he's a jerk and is always competitive. Okay, sure. Like if you want to talk about, but I don't understand like how you. Well, you're saying LeBron James isn't competitive. Like LeBron James is incredibly competitive. He's been to the finals eight years in a row. Another history. Oh, Gideon. Okay. This is all right, because we're going to land Karn on a stable board here, which is a big a big W for the home team. Plus on this, play the Karn Dad, plus Karn. One of our Planeswalkers is going to take a serious hurting next turn, next turn this turn but they're not gonna it's not gonna die I've seen you've seen him give up in the finals before I would say that he did he I would I don't think he I don't th I think giving up's the wrong way to do it I think he played like a complete jackass against the Mavericks and that was that was pretty bad like there's not really any good way to defend that playoff scenario all right so we're just gonna turn into some huge Gideon dick punching match here We're going to hope this guy, this Lyra, takes its promised land. I didn't think, I watched that whole series. I thought that the, like, the time he beat the Spurs, like, he played well. And I thought the time the Spurs beat him, his team played, like, well. Like, I think that there's a difference between giving up. Like, he is, he is more of a passive player than someone like LeBron, than someone like Kobe or James was. Just because he doesn't dominate the ball as much as he used to when he was playing in Miami. He used to be more passive because he had, you know, he looked to make the right plays and passes and such. I don't necessarily think that, that means he gave up. You like one layer? Okay, that might, that's probably totally right there, Lacey. Yeah, this is like the first time I picked this deck up here. Jesus. So how do I deal with this thing here? Do I just like are we just gonna continue just plus here? The problem with this is if I plus on this, then I, I can't eat any of these creatures, which kind of sucks. I'm gonna end up losing this interaction here because I can't interact in con like my my Lyra doesn't kill anything, which kind of sucks. I do think that LeBron, I don't, I do think that LeBron James, yes, you do need to take pay cuts. Like the best, the dollar for dollar, the best NBA player of all time is Tim Duncan. Like Tim Duncan was underpaid for his entire career in order to keep the Spurs together. Um, I think LeBron James made a mistake with um, Tristan Thompson. Like, wow, why is my opponent not just attacking? Like, right? 
They can get in two free damage into my Gideon. All right, there we go. So now I can just start, I can actually just start plussing into this, probably, and forcing them to like abyss, because my Lyra can just hold this thing off. So let's get a little aggressive here. We can get Seal away, which is gonna suck, but like, I kinda wanna force a little action here. No, they traded IT. I think LeBron James, like, a lot of people criticize, like, they criticize LeBron James. They said that, like, that play shouldn't have happened. Um, what was I going to say? They said, like, that play shouldn't have happened. Um, the play last night with J.R. Smith. Like, LeBron James should have been more aggressive and shouldn't have passed the ball. And to those people, I think that they're not, like, looking at the game, honestly. Because LeBron James made the right play by passing the ball to George Hill. And that's what LeBron James does. He makes the right basketball play. Somebody like Michael... What is this? A cast down? Okay, so now they can kill my Gideon if they see it or if they go for it. Um, I think that a lot of people... Okay, so it's going to become a 4-4. Four -four. So I'm just going to eat a creature. If my opponent ships into this Gideon with everything, I'm just going to eat this thing here and then gain the life um i think like he makes the right play so they got no one for Kyrie. they traded it yeah that th th that whole trade was not good for them wow that's huge okay so one two i have plenty of mana so we're gonna start by just attacking this gideon and seeing what happens it appears like both myself and my opponent are flooding out a lot or they could just have a second gideon that's the one thing that, like, sometimes I want to play three Gideons in this deck that I've been hanging out with here. And I just find that, like, the second Gideon is really bad because the first one usually doesn't die. The team we lost to had a suspended players that just lost to an action. The team we lost to had the suspended players just... I don't know about the suspended players. I don't know what you're referencing there, Farby. What I do know is that LeBron James is easily, and not even close, the best basketball player that I've ever seen. And he might go down as the best basketball player of all time. He will never be the most, he will never be as accomplished as Michael. Like going six and zero is unreal. And I would never like go too. Do you think James stays if they lose? I don't think he's going to stay. I think he's going to move somewhere else. I, I think that like Cleveland is just the situation they have there is like inept, I think. And I think part of that's LeBron James's fault. Like, the fact that LeBron James got J.R. Smith and Tristan Thompson paid as much as they did is just completely egregious. He can go to someplace like LA. Yeah, so now we're just gonna like get in here. If my opponent's gonna settle, that's like an odd card to have in their main deck, I think. But we could just be get if they have a settle, we could just be getting got here. And sometimes you just get got. Dude, this I'll tell you about Bane Slayer Angel. What if LeBron <laughs> The Golden State Warriors are gonna lose Clay Thompson, right? Like they like isn't Clay's contract up and they can't they actually like can't keep him? My phone's just like gonna have some high waters on because they got a flood coming to town. So let's do some math. We put two counters on this. After blowing this up, we crit, we just kill him. We murk him. I don't even have to attack with my walking buster.
you know, just takes just takes the taxes. I feel like Clay Thompson is also like underappreciated. So let me just so wait one second. Let me just do math here. So I can put two counters on this. Make this five. No blockers. Three. Or I could just attack with Lyra, and then on my opponent's upkeep, put two counters on this ballista and try to kill them. I think it's better to go put a plus one plus one counter on. I should have just this was all stupid. I should have done this on my opponent's. I should have like put the counters on on my opponent's upkeep. It was all dumb. Yes, Clay Thompson's great. We have 14 points, playing 14 for 15, and lost the game. Oh, that's odd. That sucks. So, we lost to Detroit. During the game, two Detroit players threw punches and stomped on one of our players in the ground. We had a player tackle the Detroit player out to protect our own instead of carding the player that threw punches and stomping. I think it's hard to really hit. We have 14 points, playing 14 and 15. Oh, then you guys lost. That sucks. Um, we're going to hold this back. I guess there's no reason to hold... I don't want to get this thing settled. So let's just, like... We're in how-do-we-lose territory here. Okay. So we could have beat that. We, we would have beat that if we would have attacked with our walking ballista. Which is a much more reasonable card for them to have in game one. But now we'll just play Karn. So, like... It's like, it's like, yeah, they, they got us here, but, you know, we could have killed them if we attacked with everything, but, like, worse comes to worst. We're not in that bad of shape anyways. I shouldn't have six. A new card, the new card's really cool, Gary. I think it's very, I think it's really good in, like, these mid-range matchups. I don't necessarily think it's super great against control decks, because, like, Sometimes, like, Teferi is better than Karn is. And, like, the control decks... Some, if you can keep pace with Karn, then through, like, blue card draw, then, like, Karn's medium. Where Karn shines is in these mid-range matchups because it gets so much fucking loyalty. It's so hard to, like, hit and beat up on. So we're playing, like... We're playing a mirror. So I think I want my Bloodfasts. I want my O-Ring Angel. Um, yeah, there's way too many, like, really, like, before the Pro Tour, I guess, the Pro Tour looks like it's changed some things, but before, before the Pro Tour, just these cards were in so many different decks, and it was just, like, however, how you wanted to play, like, these four, these 16 cards, or up to 16, that's, that's what the format came down to. I don't think I want Toolcraft Exemplar. We're going to get that out of here. I don't think I want fatal, as many Fatal Pushes. Um, Ballista's like kind of medium. We probably can slim down on a couple of these. We have Thopter Arrest Cast. I want Ixalan's Binding. Um, 55 cards. I want Fragmatize because they're going to bring in their own Ixalan's Binding, their own Argos Bloodfasts. Um, Lyra's not, like, super impressive, I think, here. And neither is Ballista, I guess. I think I do want O-Ring Angel. I could bring in some, like, I could just cut my Ballistas and then play some Duresses. I've got a lot of ways to kill Hardik here, and I think I'm just going to bring in some more Duresses. I have not thought about... Blue white mid range or blue black mid range, Johnny. I think it's decent. I don't really know if you want to play that deck though when you're against. I don't think you want to play the Scare of God really against like unlicensed disintegration. We got Duresses. I got like enough. I got three ways to kill Hard of Kieran. Bloodfast. Got a couple of my own Hard of Kieran. Some Gideons. Plenty of like flexible answers. Maybe this Doctor Rest is kind of garbage. I'm gonna go with that's garbage. Yeah, let's go like this. Got two Ados and a PTQ. It might be good. Like I, this, this is the first league of standard that I've played since I was working on Tom's deck. And now that uh, since Tom's deck, so like, it might be good. Now we're gonna ship this. Uh, we're in a lot 
of trouble. All right, here. That on the bottom. If we draw lands for like the rest of the game, we might win. I just wanted to play black white because, uh, well, I went to play black white Johnny because um, Jerry Thompson said it was very similar to like green white tokens, and green white tokens was just my favorite standard deck ever. So. Yeah, well, I mean, we could play this game out, but, like, I don't really want to play this game out. I just want to play an actual game of Magic. Karn and Treasure Map goes hand in hand. Yeah, Karn, Karn and Treasure Map. Um, I So, like, when it came... Like, I decided to play the Bloodfast over the Treasure Map because when I was... And th this is all... When I was listening to Jerry's podcast and when I played Green White Tokens... He says, like, honestly, the best way to win these matchups is to just play board control and to not try to kill your opponent. You just only offer, like, unfavorable trades and stuff. And Argo's Bloodfast is better, like, in some ways, they both do similar things. Jesus. I even added a land. Um, God damn it. This is just, like, I mean, I gotta keep, right? I just gotta scry land at the bottom. Um... And that you, you should not, you really should not be minusing your Karn to make tokens until the game is over. It's more, it's more similar to like you, like they said minusing, minusing Karn is the same thing as activating a colonnade in modern. Like you don't do it until the game's over. All right, here, we gotta land on top. That's what I'm talking about. Doesn't come into play untapped, so we can't play Scrap Dog on two. Which is sad. But that's just how, like, the green-whites tokens mirror, like, how you won those is you didn't try to kill your opponent. You just created, like, a big enough board, and then you got to the point where, like, you just start dictating combat. And I think Treasure Map might trick people into ways of not dictating, or to just poor play patterns, in my opinion. Now, this is all based on what Jerry said. Like, I have not played enough of this deck to really have my own opinion. But I'm just going with... I'm going to play this deck the same way I used to play Green White Tokens. And that was my favorite deck. I had my first IQ win with that deck. <clears throat> yeah, there's history. Come on. Okay. All right, we can keep up. And I'm not going to trade off here because I have a second history. If my opponent plays another history, okay, this game's going to get tough. They shouldn't offer a trade here. This is like board control. Like, this is bad. I'm going to take this because I'm behind, but I think this is actually very poor of my opponent to do. Okay, that duress would be nice. So I could actually play Black Knight. Because Black Knight can kind of like eat one of these. Yeah. Like Black Knight demands a removal spell here. So. And if they, if, they, if they got a removal spell, they got a removal spell. Like, hostage taker, Jesus. All right, so we're gonna take 12. I'm not blocking. Like, I'm, prob I'm probably gonna get murked here, but like, such is life. Alright, so now I'm going to attack because I'm okay trading two creatures here. Now I think the right play for me to do is to actually Ixalan's binding this hostage taker. Because, like, if I'm going to win this game, it's going to be through chewing through these knight tokens, I think. And the card that best chews through the knight tokens is my black knight. So I'm gonna get my Black Knight down, block this, take eight, and then just hope they don't have anything. But I'm not beating anything, so let's just sit here and hope. OK, 
cast out. Get your hostage taker back. Okay. So now I chump block, take eight. Okay, whoa. That, what was that? Alright. See, now we're, now we're like, now we're kind of in it. Well, we're not in it. So, contempt block. Right, if they had one contempt, I'd, I'd have a chance here. Right, because they contempt this, we take two, four, six. We take two, four, no matter what, because we can only put one blocker in front. Yeah. That sucks. If we'd have had, if they'd only had one contempt, we'd be in this game. Yeah, we did. We did. But I think that we were in that because my opponent did not, like my opponent was so far ahead. Like there's no way that my opponent should have given me with two history of analias in play. That's better than two previous. Little two black market throws five. Like that is better than the previous. What do you mean, Gary? What's the card? Are you talking about heroes downfall? Um, I think my opponent was doing poor board management. Like, there's no way, like, they should not have offered to trade tutus with me when they're going to have four, like, millions of four threes, you know? And I think that's the way to operate these creature mirrors that people, like, the best way to do it is to lean on your opponent. I'm going to go grab uh, Apple. I'll be right back. Hey, boy. Hey, boy. Boy. Oh, we don't have that. Yeah, I don't like the one that had stride from like Pharaohs. I'm not sure. Heroes Downfall, right? I don't know. So Gary, how's life out in uh, California? Your Facebook would suggest that you're living it up. Maybe I'll stream the mocks because it's just like a super free roll. All right. This hand's pretty bad against an aggressive deck, but like, such is life. Oh, so you're still going to school. Nice. Just a little bit, Lancey. Um, we're going to play the courtyard because there's a chance that this comes into play tapped. It's 100% guaranteed that one of these will come into play tapped if I play the isolated chapel. Okay. So my hand's actually pretty bad in this matchup. All right, it just got a lot better. So I'm just going to push this. We need to just, like, not take damage. I would love to draw, like, a relevant three-drop play that's not... Walking Blister, Scrap Heap, Scrounger. Or I'm going to play Scrounger, but I would love to be able to play a Ballista for two, but I'm not going to just I'm gonna play something defensively that I can put on the board. Okay, history would be great. Dilt. And this sucks because I don't have a guarantee that I'm going to be able to play my Walking Ballista for two because of how my mana is. That was. 
Jesus. So now my best draw is an untapped land, a Gideon, or a Fatal Push. Hazret, nice, dude. You want to win red black mirrors, you play Hazret. This card is ridiculous. All right, that's not bad. That's not good, but it's not bad. I just need to hope they don't have a disintegration and play for this Lyra. I, I think that, I think Johnny, something like Mono Red, it would be very good for the Invitational. Like, this card is just the absolute nut in all the mirrors. Hazard's unkillable game one, unless you have a Soul Scar Mage. Oh, we're going to get destroyed here. Silence of Believers. Utter end. Okay, yeah. So they shoot us. And we're just going to... <clears throat> I'm just going to chump block this Hazret. I need to give myself a chance. So... So I can attack... For three, I can go double scrap dad, block, then attack my opponent for nine. I get an activation, take three, five, four, six, take six. The problem is I can't play my freaking Lyra because my lands are tapped. And I can't gain a life because, like, I need to play Ballista because I need to not take the damage in order to make it so my Lyra is stable. Stabilizes me. So we're gonna attack with Scrap Dad, then play a 2 2 Ballista. Or maybe I should just play a 1 1 Ballista and play another Scrap Dad in order to provide the most pressure. A 2 2 Ballista isn't gonna do anything. Besides, go shoot, shoot, chunk, take one. I think it's better to go shoot. Block, shoot. If I play a 2-2 Ballista, I can chump this, or I can double block here. I'm not gonna, I have to, I have to, the Hazard's just gonna deal too much damage to me. So I have to block the Hazard. If I play a 2-2 Ballista, I go shoot, shoot. I don't have to block with this. Next turn, I crack them for seven. And I take one, three, go to nine. I don't think the 2-2 Ballista is enough. I think I need to play a 1-1 Ballista, play a Scrap Heap Scrounger, and then play a Tap Land. Because I can block this, block Hazard, shoot Ragavan, and then also like put pressure on them on the way back. <coughs> I would like to play more real life MTG events, though I'm just, I'm struggling. Okay, Rekindling Phoenix is beatable. So I'm just gonna go block this, then shoot Ragavan. And if my opponent doesn't have a disintegration, then like we're we're in a reasonable spot. Cause I am gonna crack them for a healthy amount of damage here. My opponent can just eat this. I guess I shouldn't have attacked with this one. That was stupid. That was very stupid. I should have just sent him with these. That was down because of Rekindling Phoenix. And now we just cross our fingers. Don't disintegrate me. That was a stupid attack by me. On Crop Crasher is kind of the same thing. Scrap Dog, so three. 
So my opponent exerts three, 10, 11. It is just barely enough. I wonder if they top hit this. See, if I'd have had my dude back, if I hadn't been a dumbass and attacked my Benalia token, I could have chumped, and then I would have gotten another, I would have gotten a hit in with Leroth. Right, because I chumped this. No, I went on a 10. It didn't matter. I chump block here. And then I take exactly 10. It makes me feel better. It was still the wrong play though. But I still messed that up. <sighs> okay, so I want Ixalan's Binding. Settle the Wreckage. An O-Ring Angel. I don't want my Scrap Dogs. And I don't want the Tool. So I gotta bring in two more cards. I probably just bring in these Fumigates. You know, they are kind of an anti with O-Ring Angel. I'll just have to play that in there. I don't want anything that dies a Chain Whirler and Scrap Dog can't block. I don't want this Blood Fest. Or this Duresses. Yeah, so this is what we're gonna do here. Nine viewers, I hope everyone's having a good time tonight and hanging out. Well, I'll be live for about another more, or at least until this league's over. I don't know when this league's over. Uh, I think we got to keep this because we're on the play. It does what we want to do, but I could get run over. Uh, what was I saying? I'll probably cycle this cast out, honestly. You know, it's my answer to Hazret. My opponent Mulligan, sweet. Um, yeah, I'll be, I'll be live here for the rest of the league. And I hope to get live, go a couple more times throughout the week in order to figure out what I'm going to do for the mocks this weekend. Hey, take care, Gary. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with playing the old Turton Dads list. So I think I'm going to cycle this. I need this to either become lands or like fatal pushes. I think this being a cast out is going to be below the bar. I just, I literally just took a list off of the Pro Tour and changed like two cards there, Lance. There was no, no real rhyme or reason about it. Yeah, I'll jam some games with you, Johnny. This Soul Scar Mage is going to make this history awkward because like, I could easily just toss one of these in front of it, but I guess they're gonna then they can like lightning strike my face. Okay, that's good. I'm gonna block this. And I'm just gonna like show me the shock. Yeah, they have the spray. Okay, so I take five. So we're gonna play this. We're gonna play another Karn. The question is, do I take up with Karn or do I take down with Karn? I probably just take down with it because I have so many of them. I just had to put something on the board. Like it's just a body. And if they commit a lot to this Karn, then I can at least, in the future, I can just not block it, because I have so many. The Karn just gave me eight life, and that's okay. Uh, because I know you're lifeguard. I like this standard. I'll play red back, and I want you to play blue. I think you want to play the red-black mirrors, Johnny. Like... I would not worry about the blue decks. Navigating those... I'm going to cast more through the breach after you're better. Nice. I think that those aggro mirrors are like incredibly difficult. And if you don't practice a lot of them, you're gonna get tooled on at the Invitational. Because those guys are like... Like all the Lotus Bot guys, they all play aggro decks in standard. <clears throat> Alright, well I don't have all the time in the world. So like I will, and also for like my personal life entertainment, I will play aggro mirrors against you. Um, ah, this sucks. Time to mulligan. All right, like you gotta keep it. We want, uh, yeah, we don't want that. We need a white source, really bad. Yeah, I mean, just let me know. Second Gideon is not good. 
You work an hour away, Jesus. White source, come on. I need a white source. I need a white source because I start working this Gids. Or at least if they just attack the Gideon, that would be okay. Yeah, I mean, I get it. Like you, you gotta, you gotta make a living. No play from the opponent is weird. God. I've been thoroughly unimpressed with the mana base in this deck. Throughout the number of lands they play, what colors they make, I just have not, not been impressed with this at all. Just downright egregious. I'm going to get murked because of it. It's not because of it. Like, All right, Kindling Phoenix, White Source. Okay, we can play Magic. I'm just gonna pass. Like, I'm obviously gonna be like representing Settle the Wreckage, but what else am I gonna do? Play Gideon? I could play Gideon and tick up on this. No fucking way. Is my opponent just gonna like, just give me the stones here? I think I've got to settle this. I can't just not do anything for my whole turn. And if we draw a land, I can hit O-Ring Angel on this Rekindling Phoenix. I think I would like to lead off with O-Ring Angel because it comes back. Oh, nice. Nice. All right, we're going to plus on Rekindling Phoenix. And then we're probably, now we depending on what my opponent does with this attack, we might just have to jam the Lyra. Goblin, Chain Whirler. Okay, that kills, that kills Gids if my opponent comes at Gideon. We're going to me or we're going to Gideon? Okay, we're going to Gideon. All right. I think I'm going to play O-Ring Angel because O-Ring Angel gets lifelink from Lyra and it also like makes it so this doesn't have haste at least unless my opponent's sitting on a Settle the Wreckage or not a Settle the Wreckage, a um, oh my god I'm so stupid I tapped like an asshole there while I was talking. It has been rough like I'm just a tad tired and streaming a new format I've made just a couple like pretty easy mistakes here but if this survives then I can play Lyra, and this gives us plus one, plus one lifelink. And maybe my opponent's just like flooding out, doesn't have anything going on. Just don't kill my O-Ring Angel, dude, come on. Let me cast my Lyra, don't do it. Okay, Hazret. Hazret's like not bad. Because my opponent, they swing a spell, that just kills me, right? Oh, uh, I have to chump block Hazret. What a tilt. We got a one. All right, next game. That just sucked. Like the the mulligan into like the lands not working out was just not super great. I do think I'm going to play this deck. I like this deck. And that's really what I'm looking for. Like, I don't want to be miserable all week. But I'm definitely going to make some changes. Like, this this scatter grounds is getting out of here. Um, probably going to, like, figure out something. I might cut these tool crafts. I saw a version that didn't have tool craft in it. Which is just, like, more interaction. I want a version that can handle the black-red deck. And I would think that I would do okay against the black-red deck if I adjust my removal suite. Like, I want to know why people don't play Cast Down. Like, Cast Down doesn't hit the monkey. Like, we're... Alright, so we're playing against Control again. So we're, we're playing a... Well, that's, that's a good draw. We're playing a good matchup, but... 
What a weird hand. Why do you why do you think two or three Karn? Just just wondering here. Is it just like too slow? I can buy that. Do I want three Gideons? And more two drops? You want seal away. Okay. That's what you want for your removal spell of choice. Okay. I can buy that. We'll build a deck after the league, Lancey, and then I'll then I'll stream with it. Hopefully maybe tomorrow. That would be that would be pretty sweet. Oh uh, history would be nice. Okay, that's that's good. We're gonna be able to at least hit search for his canto with that. And hopefully they fight over it so we can go search into Karn. I can see that. And we're just playing this ballista out because we got to. Yeah, I can see Karn being like too slow. Not quite impacting the board well enough. I can see that. I probably want four Black Knights now that I play this a little, play this a little more. I'm not gonna play my land before combat. The the big question here is: Can I can I afford to cast out this Search Rise Kanta? When they have Teferi in their deck, and I think I, I think I can because I have these ballistas. Like ballista can harass a planeswalker pretty well. So what I think I'm going to try to do here is I'm going to try to hit this search at the end of my opponent's turn. Well, I'm going to hit it. I'm going to try to hit it. When do I want to do this? Remove. Because I almost wouldn't mind my opponent fighting over this. He gets a trigger off of it, right? But I kind of want him to fight over it. Like, I don't mind if my opponent counters this. But I guess I'm being a little obvious. They still get the trigger, which is sad. Okay. It's good to know. All right, so that's another good bait spell. So let's get in here and attack. This is like worth countering. Okay. And now do I want to play the Ballista? I probably do. Because it makes it so my opponent can't tuck something with Teferi. Okay. So now I'm just going to attack with both creatures before combat. Oh, here comes the Teferi. Okay. So we're going to send both of these at Teferi. I'm going to guess by the fact that they stuttered, they don't have a piece of two mana interaction. This goes. All right, now we're just going to jam this Karn. And then we're going to smoke this. Alright, nice. Gotta make sure to hit this thing before I... I guess they could blink this. So I guess I should actually... So should I actually just do this in my opponent's upkeep because they could they could blink it? I think I'm gonna do that. They could like commit memory it or blink it to draw a card. But I think I'm gonna hit this... I'm gonna minus this in their upkeep. Now we can just F6. 
Here comes another Teferi. I have to cast out to hit my Karn. Sure. I want to keep my graveyard intact. So we have another Karn up there. So do you want to play four Karns in the 75, Lacey? Or are you talking three Karns in the main deck and that's probably it? Flooding out, but we did we did up our land count to twenty five. Dude, is Black Knight gonna take us to the Promised Land? Just three in the main. Glimmer, glimmer of genius. Are you playing the Toolcraft Exemplar or do you just be off that? You can't minus on this, right? Nice. And now I'd probably just ignore this Teferi and hope this works out. Holy shit. Alright, let's get... But I guess this is supposed to be a pretty good matchup, right? Like, the black-white deck is supposed to, like, beat up on this deck here. Did you have to play Tool? I saw a couple of them that weren't playing the tool. There was a deck that went 6 4. The one that went 8 2 at the Pro Tour was playing the tool, though. It's an easy side out. Okay. So, what do we do? Do we just like. We can play a, We can play around Seal. We can play around Settle Wreckage. Or we can play around. We can play around Settle Wreckage, Commit to Memory, and Blink of Eye. If we play. Like, my opponent's got to have a settle of wreckage at this point. So I think we're going to play around that. I think we're just going to get in here with our night guy. I don't anticipate this working at all. My opponent's just drawn too many cards. But sure. Okay. Do I counter spell for the way down, fam? No, holy shit. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, yeah, we can't play around. We can't play around syncopates. Guys, my phone is not empty. Like, they just have like a handful of bricks. Oh, I should have played a land so that I could scavenger grounds for this exact reason. Yep, that was stupid. Because now they're going to flip it. And like, that's big game. Yeah, that was dumb. Okay. So we still so we tuck this. So that means they have an answer for this. We might be too far gone at this point. Alright, we're just we're gonna send it. Alright, we're good. So I played, I played around Settle the Wreckage, but then I got Blink of an Eye. So maybe I'm just supposed to make him have the Settle the Wreckage. I don't know. I, like, the fact that I drew the Heart of Kieran made me not want to do it. But it just didn't end up working out. All right, so I want the Fragmatizes. I want these Ixalan Bindings. 
cards I don't want, my Fatal Pushes, my Thopter Arrests, all the creatures are good. Um, Lyra is probably not great. Heart, Tool, Karn, Cast Out. Probably the Ballista is not very good. Is Gideon the Trials actually very good? I don't think this card's really good. It just it just crews heart. I kind of want a Warning Angel, but if they wipe the board, that just sucks. I think this is what we're going to do. I think this is what we're going to do. Okay, I would like to play first, and yeah, we're going to keep this. Kind of sucks that we can't play our tool, tool boy on one, but such is life. We're probably going to end up cycling this cast out. This Forsaken Sanctuary is actually getting me. It's going to be mana efficient. Shoot. Can't tap the card. All right. All right, that's nice. We get to double spell. Double spelling is always. Oh, shit. I missed the point of damage. That's just a little sequencing things about the deck that I need to learn before I can play it. And it's going to take me like. It's going to take me like another, you know three or four leagues to figure that out. Especially when I'm like, and then I gotta be like not streaming because I'm paying attention to the game a little more. Not like the distractions, you know? That was dumb. All right. Jamming. Okay. I mean like we, that was probably gonna happen, but You get in for five here, which is a healthy chunk of damage. So now we gotta worry about settle the wreckage. So what I could do is I could cast out this in my main phase and then figure out what I can do. I think I'm gonna do that. Because getting this search off the table is important, especially considering we have an extra one. If they counter this, then we can attack with two things. If they don't, then we'll just attack with Hardy Kieran. And we will crew with this creature because this can't get sealed away. Okay, opponent takes it. This could mean they're gonna glimmer into Fumigate. If they blink my cast out, they blink my cast out. Like that was like the game's not really about that. What the game was about was just trying to figure out what they had going on. 
I do need to draw like something to crew my heart with here if if I miss or if they fumigate me. So they went one and one. It's fair. And then we're gonna get fumigated. Yeah. Okay. Alright, we're gonna cycle this cast out. Duress is not bad. I mean, if we're not going to draw a Teferi, settle the wreckage, negate, disallow. So I can, the, I have to take this Teferi because they're just going to untap with negate up and then I can't deal with it. Where's my blood fast? Yeah. I should put like three blood fasts. Ask if you shall receive. They have negate though, so I can't can't do anything with it yet. I have to try to find a bait spell. Oh shit! No, I don't have a double white card in my deck. I got on autopilot about oh, what I drew into a glimmer. That's so good. I got into my head that I wanted to be able to turn on this the blood fast. Okay. They negate and disallow. Uh, I think I'm gonna wait and I'm gonna try to do it on a turn where they do something on their main phase and then I can double spell. I don't think there's, I, I, if I pace, if I just run both of my threats out, like turn after turn, I can't overload their mana. But like also playing Drago is pretty shitty. This whole situation is not good. Okay, that's not bad. So they only have one counter spell out right now, unless they have double negate. So I think the, the spell that is going to, the spell that's gonna do me more work, I think is Bloodfast. I think Bloodfast is gonna be better than Karn. So I'm going to put Karn out here. If my opponent's gonna double negate, we're, we're gonna go to Scoop Town USA. Okay, and now they definitely have a negate. Okay. Surprised they used negate instead of disallow there just to be efficient. Torrential Gear Hulk. Targeting Glimmer of Genius. Get on that main phase grind. Okay. Well, we can binding that. Well, they have a disallow. Oh, we drew both of them back to back. Blood tilt. All right. Well, we're gonna cast this. I think we just drawn our spells in a very awkward order, which sucks. Here, use counter spell, my friend. Kefnet. Holy shit. There's a Kefnet. Alright, we're gonna have to binding. Probably binding the Kefnet at this point. And draw some. Like we gotta draw cards. There's nothing else we can do. All right, that's a good rip. Oh, it's a uh, four less tilt. All right, we're gonna get smacked by this gear hole, but we're gonna be able to draw a couple cards at least. This is another gear hole. Pull from tomorrow. Watch game. 
All right, we're good. We're good here. Okay. Return to more details. So we got wrecked in this league. Let me turn my YouTube video off here.